Dear boys and girls uh, at our First Lutheran Christian Academy, together with all your teachers and those who work there in the office, and also your parents and friends of our school and anybody else who happens to be looking in on this little devotion of ours, I'm glad we had this time to be together since our school is not in session in person for this chapel devotion uh, this coming week on Wednesday. So we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We're going to hear a Bible story now from Acts chapter 1. After his suffering, Jesus proved to the apostles in many convincing ways that he was alive, as he showed himself to them for 40 days and talked about God's kingdom. When he met with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. You heard me tell about him. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they came together, they asked him, Lord, are you now going to make Israel an independent kingdom again? It isn't for you to know, he told them, what times or periods the Father has set by his own authority. But when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will receive power and will testify of me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the farthest parts of the world. When he had said this, and while they were watching him, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him away so they couldn't see him any more. As he was going and they were gazing up into the sky, two men in white clothes were standing right beside them. Men of Galilee, they asked, why are you standing here looking up to heaven? This Jesus, who was taken away from you to heaven, will come back the same way you saw him go to heaven. I'm hoping some of you can remember that we celebrated Easter a few weeks ago. And I guess maybe you've heard before that Easter isn't just a one-day thing for us in the Christian church, but we kind of keep remembering it over a whole season of 40 days. And that's because the Bible tells us that Jesus, after he came back from the dead, kept appearing to people for 40 days. He showed them that he was alive so that they could know that when he died on the cross, that wasn't the end of the story. And when he came alive, it was sort of a way that you could know that God said yes to everything that Jesus did for you when he gave his life for your sins to bring you forgiveness. Now tomorrow, so that's Thursday, May 13, we're going to reach the end of the 40 days of Easter, and we call this Ascension Day, this particular Thursday. I guess some of you probably know that the word ascend means to go up, and you just heard that kind of thing in the Bible reading. As Jesus was telling his disciples that he was going to give them the power to be witnesses. In other words, he was going to give them the power to tell other people about him and to invite those people to believe. While he was telling them they would get that power, he began to be lifted up in front of their eyes and went back to his father God. So that's where he is now. The Bible tells us he's seated at God's right hand. That's a place of honor and a place of power. And I know you and I can't see him right now with our eyes, but the truth is that he's busy. He's welcoming your prayers that you sent to him and the prayers of all of his dear people. He's sending his spirit to us and giving us the power to do our work and to speak about him. And you know what? That power really works because the Bible tells us in this same Acts chapter 1 that in those days there were only 120 Christians in the world and now we know that more than 2 billion people trust in Jesus and call him their Lord. Now the disciples were kind of confused that day. The Bible told you that too. There was a lot they didn't know about, you know, when would everybody in the world finally get to see that Jesus is the king? Well, there's a lot they didn't know. And there's a lot about Jesus and his father God that you and I don't know. But that's actually okay. The main thing is that our Father God knows. And when he decides that the moment is just right, he's going to let everybody else know and see with their eyes that Jesus is the King. The disciples, I just told you, were kind of confused. 
after Jesus went up into heaven, they were just sort of standing there, gawking into the sky, and two angels came. The angels looked like men dressed in white clothing, but they were angels, and they said to the disciples, now don't you worry. You saw Jesus go up with your own eyes, and it, that's the same way sometime you're going to see him come back. So this actually, my dear students, this is God's Ascension Day promise to you that Jesus is for sure going to come back. That's why when we recite our creed, Sunday after Sunday, in the Christian church all over the world, we say this too. We say he will come again to judge the living and the dead. So anyway, in the meantime, we keep trying to do our work. We try to remind ourselves and people in our families and then tell other people that we might weep when God gives us the chance to do that. We try to remind all of us of what Jesus did. And we remind ourselves that even though we don't see him now with our eyes, he's always with us, he always hears your prayers, he's always helping us in the work we do for him. And when the time is just right, he's going to come back and bring us his joy. Now let's pray. O gracious, risen, and ascended Lord Jesus, we thank you for that promise of the day when you went back to your Father, that you will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. We thank you that you've given us faith to believe you. We ask you that you would hold us close to you all our life through, that you would also give us the right words to say to remind brothers and sisters and fathers and mothers and fellow students and others that we meet uh, all that you have done for them and to remind them too that you haven't left us, but that you are coming again in your glory. Give us the faith all our days to believe that and to trust you with joy and thanksgiving. All these things we ask for your own name's sake, dear Jesus Christ. Hear us now in your great mercy. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.